This video will discuss the Hamiltonian operator for the helium atom. So we've discussed as much as we're going to discuss for the hydrogen atom. So let's move on now to the case of the helium atom where we have two electrons. So we start where we have a nucleus. Our nucleus now has two protons and two neutrons for helium-4, one neutron for helium-3. So our, our nucleus is going to be fixed at the origin once again. It has a charge of 2 plus or, or positive 2 times charge of the electron. There are two electrons now. We have three distances to take care of as far as our potential energy. R1 is the distance from electron 1 to the nucleus. R2 is the distance from electron 2 to the nucleus. And R12 is the distance from each electron to the other. These are taking place in a three-dimensional uh, Cartesian coordinate system, and electron 1 and electron 2 are allowed to take on any value of position they would like to in x, y, and z. We have a new definition of the Laplacian for a single coordinate now. So since we have multiple particles, we want to have a Laplacian that is just for that particle. So del squared i is going to equal the second partial derivative with respect to xi, second partial derivative with respect to yi, and second partial derivative with respect to zi all summed up. So it's going to give us the operator which takes the second partial derivative for each spatial coordinate of the given particle, whether that's 1, 2, etc. All right, our wave function psi is going to be a function of the coordinates of our nucleus, the coordinates of our electron 1 and the coordinates of electron 2. We're going to simplify this a little bit by keeping our uh, nucleus fixed at the origin there. And so that's going to be h psi equals e psi. So our Hamiltonian acting on our wave function is going to give us our energy times our same wave function back. Just as always, the Hamiltonian is the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy operator. The kinetic energy operator is going to be the kinetic energy of the nucleus plus kinetic energy of electron 1 plus kinetic energy of electron 2. So that'll be equals minus h bar squared over 2 big M. Big M is 2 times mass of, of proton plus either 1 or 2 times mass of a neutron depending on whether it's helium 3 or helium 4. We'll just assume it's helium-4, and it's two, pro, uh, two neutrons. Minus h-bar squared over 2 big M del squared N, Laplacian for the nucleus. Minus h-bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron del squared electron 1. Minus h-bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron del squared of electron 2. Each of those three kinetic energy terms. What we're going to do in basically every atom and every molecule is to assume what's called the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, where the mass of this nucleus is much, much greater than the mass of the electron, so it's essentially thought to be infinite, and the nucleus is fixed at the origin. So this means that the kinetic energy of the nucleus is going to be zero, and our wave function is just going to be a function of the coordinates of all of our electrons. For the case of helium, that's electron one and electron two. So we'll have six spatial dimensions to worry about. Now our, our potential energy operator, <clears throat> that's going to be the Coulomb potential acting between all pairs of charged particles. So the potential that electron 1 feels due to the nucleus, potential that electron 2 feels to the, due to the nucleus, and the potential that the electrons feel due to each other. So the Coulomb potential is charge 1 times charge 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught distance. So this is equal to uh, plus 2e times minus e. So minus 2, I should have minus 2e squared in here, I believe. Minus 2e squared, 1e squared. Okay, minus 2e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r1 minus 2e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r2 for the potential of the nucleus and electron 2. Then what the electrons feel relative to each other, e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r12. <clears throat> okay, we could gather the terms of the Hamiltonian 
uh, and see if we could do separation of variables here. Ideally, we'd like to do a function which depends on only electron 1 times a function that only depends on electron 2. So let's see if we can do that. Well, this function here only depends on the coordinates of electron 1. This only depends on the coordinates of electron 2. This only depends on the coordinates of electron 1. This only depends on the coordinates of electron 2. But then we have a term that's a problem. This term depends on the coordinates of electron 1 and electron 2. <clears throat> Worse than that, it's in a denominator. So there's no way to get this into a function which depends on electron 1 times a function which depends on electron 2. So this problem here, where we have a term that depends on two uh, sets of coordinates simultaneously, means it is non-separable. We can't do separation of variables to develop two separate Hamiltonians and multiply the result together at the end. So since this is non-separable, there's no exact solution, or there's no simple way to get any kind of exact solution to this problem. So to get these energies of our helium atom, what we need are approximate methods, so we can get an approximate wave function with an approximate energy. So what we'll spend the next chapter doing is developing those methods for approximating the wave functions and energies of quantum mechanical systems. Then in the chapter after that, we'll come back and apply this to the helium atom and also atoms in general.